one of the most famous sounds there is in this universe. And that sound is OM. And I wonder if you've heard this sound before because this sound OM is sounded billions of times a day across the world by many, many people. So we're going to investigate together this sound OM, which is the first sound really of the Sanskrit language. So this language that we're exploring together is Sanskrit. You could also say Samskrita. And this language is made up of the word sam and krita. So samskrita means that which is made, krita, sam, perfect or whole or complete. In other words, a language that describes itself as perfectly formed. And this perfectly formed language really begins with this sound, om. Om can be called a mantra. So what is a mantra? One way of looking at it is it's that which is found hidden within speech. So this speech which you can hear coming out of this mouth right now, it's not hidden speech. It's very clearly audible. You can intellectualize this speech. You can begin to try and understand this speech. But mantras are more hidden in the sense that you cannot intellectualize them. You cannot try to understand them because they are from the speech which falls from the brain to the heart and to a center within the body that is not necessarily manifest. So all the time saying we must explore in our own experience. So later on in today's presentation, we will explore chanting OM together or sounding it together to explore a little bit about what this might mean that mantras are found in hidden speech. Now, another way to look at what mantras are, a folk etymology, is that man connects with the word human. So a mantra is for the human, and humans have a mind. So man in Sanskrit means to think. So if humans are those which have the capacity to think, then a mantra provides tra, protection for those who have the capacity to think. And what might it be protection from? We could look at a mantra, which OM is, as one which helps us cross over the mind, which is the discursive thinking, speaking mind. These words are coming through from the mind. Mantra would help you cross over or cross through the mind and go to that which is hidden within us. And I imagine all of us spend a lot of the day thinking, cogitating, wondering what we should do next, whether what we've done before was the right thing, thinking about past and future. So a mantra, the purpose of it would be to take us beyond that to something much more permanent and unchanging. Now, this mantra that we're going to be looking at today, OM, is, a, is written in a symbolic form. Now, I'm just going to lift this up and you might be able to see it on the wall. See it up there. That's the form of OM. See, it's like a three with a tail and a little moon dot above it. So that form represents this sound, OM. And this is a very, very famous symbol. So that's how it's often characterized or symbolized, this sound OM. And it's made up of three parts, A, U, and M. And each part of this sound OM represents something. It represents aspects of creation. And this sound OM is said to contain within it all aspects of creation. The sound A, represents consciousness, creativity, the energy that runs through us. The sound U is activity, 
passion, preservation, and the sound mm represents when things come to rest, when they begin to quiet. And it also represents the sense that of ego, that I am existing. So we have a, u, and m. That's three parts. But often we forget there's actually also a fourth part to this mantra or sound, om. And the fourth part is that which is silent at the end. But we'll have to try this out for ourselves when we sound. Is the fourth part actually silent or is it filled with vibration, with a certain energy? We'll discover for ourselves because the only way we can explore these sounds, the only way we can really delve into a language is to try it out for ourselves and find out for, in our own experience, regardless of what anyone else says, whether these have efficacy, whether we connect to them and whether we relate to them. So before we sound this mantra Om, I would just like to read to you a quote about Om. And this is one of millions and millions of quotes about Om because much study has been done on the sound Om. PhDs have been done just on this one sound Om. Much scientific research has been done in India and other places too on these mantras from the Sanskrit language, on sounding these mantras, on chanting these mantras. And some discoveries have been made during these scientific experiments that those who are sounding these sounds of Sanskrit, their their memory capacity increases exponentially and the frontal cortex of their brain expands. So scientifically, there's research ongoing still today on the effects of these sounds. I would like to read to you a quote from a man called John Blofeld. He's no longer living in the world today, but he was a great student really of sound and exploring mantras. And he spent many years traveling in Tibet, China, and he learned with many, many teachers. And this is what he wrote on Om. He said, it's the initial syllable of almost all mantras. It embodies tremendous creative power and it represents the infinite, the one mind, the all embracing consciousness which is the very essence of existence. So that's one take on Om. <laughs> Remember, there are hundreds, if not thousands, of, of different descriptions of Om, but that's one that resonated with me. So as we go into exploring the sounding, let's see what you find in your experience. So when we explore these sounds of Sanskrit, it's often good to sit comfortably. So make sure you're sitting comfortably right now. Your sit bones are nicely connected with the floor or the cushion, wherever you're sitting. And hopefully your back is upright. It doesn't have to be straight, but your spine is vertical. This is very good for the sounding practice. And before we sound OM together, we'll just get settled by taking a nice deep inhale through the nose and exhale through the mouth. We will try sounding OM three times together and we'll leave a space between each sounding. It's very important we leave a space between each sounding because the silence, the fourth part of the mantra, is just as important as the first three sounds, a, u, and m. So let me show you once before we try together. This is how it would be.
So let's sound this together three times so that you can discover in your own experience and make your own mind up about this sound OM. It's very useful to close the eyes for the sounding simply because so many distractions are taken in through the eyes in form and colour. They're beautiful distractions, but they're not necessary for sound. Sound is sound. It doesn't need the vision. So I would invite you to close the eyes and we'll sound OM together three times. Oh. Oh. 